Hello, so today I'm going to be talking about a really interesting historical occurrence in American Christianity happening in the early to mid 19th century that was greatly influenced by the awful disclosures of Maria Monk. So first, what is the awful disclosures of Maria Monk? Um, it is a book published in 1836 by a former nun who had escaped the Hotel du Convent in Montreal. She shares a lot of shocking atrocities occurring inside the convent, including the nuns being forced to have intercourse with the neighboring Catholic priests, the babies resulting from these encounters being baptized and then immediately murdered, and nuns who refuse to comply being imprisoned in the convent. Eventually, Maria becomes pregnant and flees to New York to save her unborn child. There she meets and tells her story to a minister in a charity hospital who encourages her to share her story with the world. The book was widely popular in the country shortly after it was published and was one of the most popular books of the antebellum era, second only to Uncle Tom's Cabin. However, it was quickly revealed that the novel was potentially a hoax. This begins with Maria's mother coming out and sharing that Maria was an uncontrollable child who did not know right from wrong due to a childhood brain injury. She also shares that Maria's only interaction with the Catholic establishment was when she was an inmate at the Magdalene Asylum in Montreal. The story actually goes that when she was 18, she became pregnant and was asked to leave the asylum. This is when she met William K. Hoyt, who was the head of the Canadian Benevolent Society, an organization that combined Protestant missionary work with an ardent Catholic activist, anti-Catholic activism. That is important. Um, so it is thought that most of the book was actually written by Hoyt and some of his fellow nativists who might have seen Maria's disordered imagination as an opportunity and they took advantage of it. A lot of the facts fell through within the next two years that proved Maria was an imposter and not the pure woman that she claimed to be, and eventually she lost all of her supporters and credibility. However, the book still remained popular. It is important to understand the historical context in which this book was published so we can understand why it was so popular and influential. In the 1830s, a political movement called nativism emerged when immigration to the United States increased. This belief held patriotism as the highest ideal and viewed people of certain religions and nationalities as unable to become true Americans. They also feared that the new ideas being brought into the country would undermine the American foundation. Nativists believed that only white, Anglo-Saxon Protestants were the ideal Americans. Focusing specifically on bigotry concerning American Catholics, it was widely believed that Catholicism ran counter to American ideals. Between 1830 and 1860, anti-Catholicism in America was unprecedentedly rampant due to increased immigration from predominantly Catholic countries like Ireland and Italy. This can be seen in the graphic to the left where a Catholic priest and his men are um, coming to America and they're basically saying, we're gonna take your spiritual beliefs, we're gonna take your um, land, estates, and we're gonna take over the country with their ideals. So that is clear how uh, um, anti-Catholic the country was at the time. Um, a really good example of this anti-Catholic sentiment is when a convent in Massachusetts was burned to the ground in 1834 after anti-Catholic sermons and rumors of convent abuse were being spread in the state. Um, the following years also saw several attempts by state governments all over the country to legislate against convents, as well as numerous incidents of violence towards Catholics. Further, there was a lot of anti-Catholic literature circling at the time that had a major impact on the anti-Catholic sentiment in America by focusing on the supposed hypersexuality of Catholic priests and how they were a threat to pure American women in the Protestant family. Regardless of the truth behind the story, the awful disclosures drew on every popular fear and misunderstanding of Catholicism prevalent at the time, which made it a rallying point for the nativist movement as well as the most important nativist propaganda against Catholicism. Overall, it inspired a host of imitators and played a large part in the rise of the political nativism against Catholics in America. The wide scope of its influence is evidenced by the creation of a new political party called the Know Nothings in the 1850s, and to the left, we can see their flag that literally says, Native Americans, beware of foreign influence. So you can see where their ideals lie. Um, it was an extremely anti-Catholic and anti-immigrant um, party, and it was sparked by the influence and popularity of the awful disclosures of Maria Monk. Um, it is important to study a topic like this because it shows a different side of antebellum era America, specifically concerning the Protestants' opinions of outsiders and the power that they were able to exert over them. 
This historical event highlights the different contours of the two branches experiences in the early United States. It also demonstrates how the social and historical context of the time period really does have an impact not only on how Protestants and Catholics were able to establish themselves in early America, but it also highlights the importance of the time period when studying the influence these two branches had over one another. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something interesting today.